<laughs> um, hey, yeah, so um, uh, welcome to my talk. My name is um, Evan, and um, I, I've been, so uh, thanks very much for the last speakers, by the way. That was a great introduction uh, to a lead up to this talk. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you about building a Scala database, a, a high performance database using Scala, Akka, and Spark. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been a long time uh, user and contributor to um, Spark and Cassandra since the O.X days. Um, how many of you guys remember the really early days of Spark? Anybody? Anybody? No? Uh, a few people? Awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing how these communities have grown, like from like who, nobody had heard of it to something that like pretty much everybody is using. So pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Um, I'm the creator and maintainer of a couple open source projects. Um, the Spark job server, which I won't talk about today, but it's a RESTful API for uh, managing uh, your Spark jobs, uh, as well as FileDB that we'll talk about today. Um, right, so, the, yeah, there. <laughs> so, um, so nowadays, uh, streaming is king, right? Like, so in, in the early evolution of big data, what well, people ran a lot of bad jobs, uh, that was really all that uh, MapReduce uh, could, could give you. Um, and, uh, what, and what happens is that more and more uh, you find that uh, businesses want insights faster and faster, right? So, so just running like say, you know, a, a daily bad job is not, is not good enough. People want to know what's happening now, right? So typically you would have an architecture like this where I'm feeding data um, events such as the, the IoT events that previous speaker talked about, they get fed into a message queue. Right? And, and then from message queue, it goes into some kind of processing system where you're maybe doing you know, aggregations or you know, that kind of stuff. And, and after that, you need to kind of persist it somewhere because you need to serve that data, right? Um, so, um, and uh, in the, in traditionally, uh, folks wrote this to, um, uh, to maybe like files on disk or distributed file system like HDFS. Uh, but more and more, um, that, that, uh, that, that is not a really good match uh, for the streaming paradigm uh, as you have to often write data at you know, different times, deal with late events, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, you're starting to see the, the, riot, you know, the increasing use now of distributed databases. And um, a couple of notes about this kind of pattern. Uh, one is that, um, you, um, that you need to always be appending data. But um, one thing to think about is that it's actually quite advantageous to have a property called item potency. And uh, what this means is that um, it's just like you're writing data to MySQL. If I'm writing data using a primary key PK1, and sometime later I have to write that data again using the same key, you notice that it does not get read twice, right? That it, it's, it's, uh, the data gets uh, read to one place. And that is actually, um, that's actually a really good property. Um, can anyone think of any reason why that might be good? Reruns. Hmm? Reruns. That's right. So, so basically, handling failure, right? Like in a lot of businesses, um, having exactly once ingestion is fairly important. So, um, one easy way to think about exactly once it is at least once plus item potency. So that, that gets you to exactly once in a fairly simple way. You don't have to uh, cook up super complex. Um, logic in your streaming pipeline to do that, right? Um, so a really quick introduction. Uh, FileDB is basically an open source distributed version uh, columnar database uh, that allows you to do updates. And it's been designed for the modern streaming world. Um, and let me figure out <laughs> how to use this correctly. Uh, so uh, what it is, is that it, it gives you uh, columnar encoding. And what I mean by that is that uh, it is like uh, Apache Parquet, probably everyone, uh, most folks in the big data world are familiar with that uh, technology. It, uh, you're taking, say, a million records, and you're encoding each um, column in your schema separately. That allows you to apply a lot of advanced uh, compression techniques that uh, work uh, much better. Um, but at the same time, um, unlike Parquet, it, um, so it has a, the speed like Parquet, but allows you to uh, filter your data in a much more advanced and natural way, and as well as ingest data using a primary key scheme like you would uh, in a traditional database. And, you can, and it, it is basically integrated with Spark SQL so that you could query using um, tr your traditional SQL, which makes it very easy to integrate with standard BI tools um, like, uh, I don't know, there's like a million of them out there. Um, and the way that you would use it is that um, 
it, so basically it, is, it sits on top of Cassandra. Now, uh, Apache Cassandra is an excellent um, database for if you want to write lots of small data uh, randomly and you want to read it back randomly. An example is for dashboards, right? So you have a lot of um, small things that you want to feed to a lot of users. And it's very low latency. It handles that case really well. Where um, Cassandra does not work as well is if you want to use it for things like doing ad hoc um, queries that might take a long time or uh, building machine learning models, um, any kind of analytics applications where you need to read a lot of data, um, Cassandra is not optimized for that use case. And that's where FileDB comes in, is that you can use it as a store for reading a lot of data at once. And it is 100% reactive. So today's talk is actually more about how we're going to use, um, how we use uh, our favorite technologies, Scala, Akka, and, and Spark. Um, and I'm proud to say that um, that 100% includes even the high performance code. I think you'll find very, very, very few um, Scala data, you know, 100% Scala uh, databases out there. I, this might be only one. I, I think I'm aware of maybe one other project. I'm not really sure. Um, so why would you use um, Scala, Akka, and Spark, right? So um, I think probably everyone, has everyone heard of Akka? Uh, pretty much, right? So um, the actor system is a great model uh, for, uh, for a lot of things. Um, one is that we can eliminate a shared mutable state, you know, which is an easy way to shoot yourself in the foot. So there's a lot of state in the database. Uh, when we ingest data, there's state you want to you know, cache stuff. So that, so that makes um, ACA a natural fit. Um, and ACA also has a great remote and clustering module that allows you to coordinate multiple nodes. Again, things that you have to worry about in a distributed database. Um, and it makes building uh, client server things very easy. You just send messages from the client to the server and you can respond, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, building back pressure, handling failure, these are things that, again, um, are fairly easy to do uh, with Akka. Um, and for Spark, what Spark gives us is that um, it integrates with so many different data sources, so it becomes very easy to ingest data. It has a SQL parser, you know, distributed um, uh, data uh, processing. So basically, Spark handles all of the uh, data processing and querying needs. Uh, I'm going to go uh, really quickly into um, an architecture of one what one FileDB looks like. What it looks like is that at the very top, we have a bunch of actors where both data and um, commands are coming in. And then the work gets farmed out to more actors. Um, and uh, there's, some, there's logic underneath that um, then uh, takes data that comes in as records and converts it to efficient columnar chunks. And one, uh, one question uh, is um, that I'll cover in a little bit more depth is uh, when do you use uh, ACA actors or ACA in general versus using something like uh, Scala futures. So the way we do it is that um, the core um, the core logic uh, is uh, that is not uh, contained in, in ACA actors. Um, it <coughs> auto logic handling I/O and, and stuff is relatively stateless and uses uh, typed futures, and that gives us a great, an easy way to compose um, that logic. You know, you go from one stage to another to produce results, and it's completely synchronous, which we want for high performance I/O. Um, and what we use Akka for is basically uh, two things: one is managing state, and another one is um, for handling um, the re remote connections, like having clients write data in um, through Akka. Um, and, and so there's, for example, each of these guys uh, has a state like a mem table, and it's and the scheduling. The scheduling is another thing that Akka is really, really good for. Uh, actually, basically, I just summarized um, this um, in the slide. Yeah. So basically, for Akka, async messaging, um, handling state, making sure that the state doesn't leak. Right. Um, scheduling things is really, really good at. Uh, we, might, we might want to, for example, flush uh, data after a certain period of time. So Akka has a built-in scheduler that's really useful for that. Um, so this is what it looks like when we send a control flow message. Um, and this is a bit unconventional, but it's pretty cool. So every Spark application has what is called a driver or an application. And, and also as workers, and the Spark lingo is called executors. So you have, let's say you have a two-node uh, cluster here, executor. What we do is, uh, in FileDB is that we actually embed the logic within Spark 
and it spins up an app cluster which is in parallel to the Spark cluster. And we take advantage of something called a cluster singleton. This means that in your whole cluster, I want exactly one copy um, of an actor. And, and that's because uh, this might have state that contains how the data is distributed amongst the different nodes, right? And, and so when I want to send a command such as flush, right, from the driver, what we do is that we go through something called a cluster, uh, a singleton proxy that knows how to find this uh, cluster actor. This, I mean, I have it drawn in the middle, but it's actually sitting on one of these nodes. And so it will find the right node, send it there, and then this will distribute the message to, to the different nodes. Uh, wait a minute, I think it went, okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, so why do we use uh, Akka and Spark? Um, Basically, there are a few problems that uh, Spark is great for stateless processing, like you take data in HDFS or Cassandra or FileDB and you're gonna process it through a bunch of steps. But if you have to keep state, um, that's not something that Spark is really uh, good at. Um, and for us, um, we, have a, we have an additional requirement that the state has to be sticky, meaning that we want the state to persist on the same node. So if I send keys K1 and K2, and K1 is processed on node one, and K2 is processed on you know, uh, node two, we want subsequent keys that are the same to go to the same node. So for that kind of stuff, um, Akka is a better fit because it, it manages state and also gives us a synchronous messaging pattern. Whereas uh, Spark is not a messaging platform, right? Like you can't, you know, I, there are some hacks I can do, like I can send data to all the nodes, but it's, Spark is not really designed for messaging, right? So, so we're basically using um, Akka to complement Spark and um, give us more flexibility in terms of doing complex things like managing state. Um, and the way that uh, we take, we also take advantage of this for routing data. So the data comes in at the top, goes into a row source actor that um, then uses a partition map to route uh, data to the right node um, and process it. And the one really nice thing about using actors for this is that in the future, uh, let's say that we want to change the architecture, and let's say that I want the ingestion logic to be separated to a separate JVM. Now, I don't actually need to re-architect my app at all. I just basically change the ACA configuration and change where the actors are started, and boom, they get sent over the network. I mean, there's some things you, you would want to tune, like um, the Java serialization is very slow. You probably want to tune that so that you use something faster. But, but um, Fundamentally, it's a very powerful model for um, building your applications that you can um, abstract them and make them distributed. Um, we built this before um, Akka Streams was really mature. So we kind of have to bake in our own protocol for doing um, uh, at least once and back pressure. And the way we do it is that uh, we kind of use ACKS as a way of slowing down the data. So that ACK is pr fairly common, but then we also built in a retry mechanism into the protocol so that if we don't get ACKS back within a certain timeout, then we resend the data. And again, um, all the uh, basics that ACK offers you, such as scheduling, uh, helps, helps a lot in this area. Um, ACK has a really awesome testing framework called um, the multi-node spec and an SPT plugin called SPT Multi-JVM. Um, this is a really awesome tool for building uh, and testing distributed applications. You, it has barriers so that all the nodes can reach a certain point, and then uh, it will go and um, uh, you can run tests. You can test inject network failures, so there's a lot of really powerful stuff in there. Um, I'm gonna skip over this a little bit. Basically, the core API is, um, has um, features in it. Um, so one thing that a database needs is monitoring and uh, performance measurement, right? So what, um, what we use is a library called Kmon. How many people have heard of Kmon? Um, awesome. So uh, Kmon gives you uh, both statistics that are specific for um, things like ACA and play and so on um, out of the box, but it also gives you um, concurrent tracing which is uh, super cool. And what I mean by concurrent tracing is, uh, in this code, I have um, basically an append segment. This is one, one of the core paths, core write paths. And you can see in this for comprehension that there's a couple stages, and each of the stages uh, return a future. So these are composed futures. We do one thing and, you know, in the future, and then we you know, do another thing, right? 
And what you see here is that I'm actually passing a tracing context um, to each step. And what K1 would do is that then later I can sample the traces. I can say sample 1% of traces. And I can actually get, even though futures are crossing threads, I can still get uh, statistics as well as individual traces, like, OK, this happened at time A, then it went to this other thread and at time B. And this is invaluable for, um, for being able to capture what's going on uh, in an asynchronous uh, high performance system. Uh, so, so this is a really awesome <coughs> library. Um, and um, one other note is that it also uses HDR histogram, which is pretty awesome for capturing uh, histograms. And just a really quick note about validation. Uh, I'm going to plug Bill Venner's uh, Scalactic library um, that uh, lets you compose validation things. Basically, it gives you a return type of like, you know, some type A or uh, some error type. And you can compose this all the way down so that at the end, I yield the desired result. But if it fails at any one of the stages, I can easily uh, get out um, the error type, which is, which is pretty cool. OK, thanks. Um, finally, uh, there's a couple of things. So we talked about high level how things work. I'm going to bring you all the way down to like, you know, very low level stuff. So um, there's some, uh, some interesting uh, stuff that I'll point out. Like you can look it up in the slides if you want. But basically, um, what the, the format, that, the columnar format that we use is also uh, hand wrote. Um, basically, what this is, you can think of it as a um, binary format sequence or uh, Scala vector that gives you random access with no deserialization. So you can basically read stuff at uh, machine speed, um, half a nanosecond per read. Um, There's extremely high, like probably highest performance Scala code that you'll find anywhere. Um, and it uh, can work, um, you know, it's designed to work like off heap and support missing values. And so that, that's, this is some of the stuff that we use under the covers to get very high performance. Um, and we also have a, um, a, 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 a generic record type that uh, is also very high performance and is, again, a no serialization designed for on or off heap um, and all the stuff, you know, just uh, designed from the ground up to minimize uh, GC and um, to aim for a very high performance. So who said Scala cannot be the fastest thing on the JVM, right? <laughs> So yeah, thank you very much. Um, this, I want to thank you for the Scala community. <laughs>